Hello my friend, good to see you again. Thank you, support of my Christian's ministry, Biblical Precept Presentation Online and uh, Gospel Music Ministry. Today we will focus on um, the seventh phenomenon of a Christology. Uh, I do believe you listened to the first to six phenomena of a Christology. It may intensify your learning uh, for the theology and also Bible study. We continue to uh, discover uh, what is the seven phenomena of a Christology. By the way, this is uh, my own uh, uh, book. Uh, the book named The Phenomena of a Christology will help uh, the learner uh, to discover why the Christianity is so uh, embraced of the Bible. And if you're a college student, uh, more than welcome, uh, discover together with us uh, to learn, to equip yourself, uh, and to fight a good fight of faith for the Bible and also for your faith, regardless of the denomination. Uh, well, I just pray that these uh, Phenomenon of a Christology, this theory will help you uh, to uh, gain more uh, the vision and insights uh, in order to gain your degree or uh, using this knowledge to equip your church member. Let us discover the seven, uh, seventh uh, phenomenon of a Christology is that the Christianity keeps steadfast in the vision of the New Jerusalem. The city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light and the lamp is its lamp. The nation will walk by its light. In the Revelation chapter 21, indicated that the they will be only those who names are written in the books, a lamp's book of life. Those who have not defined their garments, and he who overcomes will be clothed in white garments. They will walk with Lord in white, and their name by no means erased out of the book of life. Nothing impure will ever enter it. No, where anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, in other words, those who are unbelievers, the vice, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice music arms, the idolaters, and all liars. Their place will be in the fairy lake of a burning sufferer. This is the second death. You can refer to the Revelation chapter uh, 21 verse 8 and verse 27. Apostle John's vision in Revelation chapter 3 verse 4 to 5 indicates that he who overcomes will clothe in white. Garments, and they will walk with Lord in white because they are worthy. A white garment is signified not only purity, also uh, redification. Garments in the Bible is signified what we are in our walk and living. Based on the biblical interpretation, it signifies the walk and the living that are unspotted by death and approved by the Lord. It is a prize to the overcomers in the Melonian kingdom. Christianity is believed that every followers of Christ Jesus needed two garments. Not only one, two garments. First, the first is the garment of justification for their salvation. It signifies Christ, the Christ whom they received and they believed. 
as the objective of righteousness. As Luke chapter 15, uh, verse 22, indicated that a son who received the best robe from his father. By the righteousness government of Christ, each Christian has been justified by God. According to the first Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. The second is the government of redification for their acceptance, signifying Christ, the Christ who they live out as their subjective uh, righteousness. Apostle Paul had laid a good example to live for Christ and state. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. In the Philippines chapter 1 verse 21. The white garment mentioned in Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 is referred to the second garment, which need for us to receive the reward and enter into the kingdom to walk with the Lord and, re and reign with Him. This is the Lord's promise to those who are overcomers. It will be fulfilled in the Melonia kingdom after the Lord comes back. After the Lord comes back. God revealed the vision through Apostle John about the church in the Sardis. Sardis, in the Greek, words means the remains the remainder or the restoration. As a sign, the church in Sardis from the time of the reform, reformation to the second coming of Christ, the reformation was God's reaction to the apostate Roman Catholic Church, which is signified by the degraded church in Titia. It was accomplished by a minority of the believers, the remainder. Therefore, it was a restoration by the remainder. Many have considered the reformed Protestant church to be living, but the Lord said, I know your walks that you have a name, that you are living, and yet you are dead. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 1, Therefore, she need the living spirit and a shining star. The things which remain are the things that have been lost and were restored by the Reformation, such as justification by faith, and the open Bible. Through these things have been restored. They were about to die. Hence, they need to be revived. This is the actual situation of the Protestant Church. Since the reform, Protestant Church are dead. They will be on aware of the Lord's coming as a thief in his secret appearing to his seekers. Therefore, there is the needs of a watchman for need. There is the needs of a watchfulness. But the good news is that the vision also unveils that they are new names in Sardis who have not defined their garments and they, walk, they will walk with Lord in white because they are worthy. He who overcomes will be clothed thus in white garments. And the Lord shall by no means erase his name out of the book of life. This is in the Revelation chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. 
The Book of Life in Chinese literary says 生命者. In Greek it says test Boblos test Zoe. It is a divine record of the name of those who partake of the blessing that God has prepared for them. The names of all the saints chosen by God and predestinate to partake of these blessings are written in this book. In the Revel, uh, you can refer to Ruk chapter 10 verse 20. These blessings are in three stages. That's very important to discover. The, these blessings are in three stages. First stage is in the church. Second stage is in the um, Melonia kingdom. And the third stage is in eternity. The blessing in the stage of the church, such as forgiveness, redemption, generation, uh, eternal life, and uh, divine nature are the initial portion. All God's chosen one whose names are written in the book of life have a share in these initial portion to begin their spiritual life. If they cooperate with God's supplying grace, they will mature in life in the church age. And this earlier maturity in life will constitute a prize, which the Lord will reward them as He is coming back. The prize will be the entrance into the Melonia kingdom and participation in the divine blessing in the stage. Such as joy in the rest of the Lord, the ring over the nation. However, there are many of his chosen people after receiving his forgiveness, redemption, eternal life, divine nature, will not cooperate with his grace and will not go on with him. Therefore, they are unable to mature in life in the church age and will not be ready at the Lord's coming back to enter into the Melonia kingdom and share in the divine blessing of that age as prize. Therefore, during the Melonia kingdom, their names will be erased from the Book of Life. After being disciples, after being disciplined by the Lord and growing in life unto maturity during the Melonia kingdom, they will share in the divine blessing in the stage of eternity, such as eternal priesthood with God's eternal presence and eternal kingship, the new Jerusalem, the tree of life, and the water of life. These you can refer to the Revelation chapter 22, verse 3 to 5, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, and Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. At that time, their name shall again be written in the book of life. This means that all God's chosen one whose name are written in the book of life and who have been brought into the participation of the divine blessing in this stage of the church shall be no means perish forever. You can refer also to the John chapter 10 verse 28. New Jerusalem in Chinese literary said Xin Yerusalem literally translated as the name of the city in Mark chapter 3 verse 8, in reference to its inhabitants, Matthew chapter 2 verse 3. But in figuratively as the spiritual 
home of Christ as a spiritual home of God and His people. You can refer to the Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, and uh, Hebrew chapter uh, 12, verse 22. It is a new Jerusalem. It is, it is a new heaven and a new earth. And the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city, as you know, the verse, uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 to 24. The city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of a God give it its light and the lamp is its lamp. The nation will walk by its light. The holy city as the tabernacle of a God is for God to dwell in and a God and the lamp as the temple are for the redeemed saints to dwell in. In the new heaven and the new earth, the new Jerusalem will be a mature dwelling place for God and man for eternity. This heavenly city will be the abode of all the saints, the bride of Christ, and the place Christ is prepared for his people. During the millennium, the new Jerusalem described in the detail in the Revelation chapter 21 verse 9 to 22 verse 5 apparently will be suspended over the earth and it will be the dwelling place of all believers during eternity. The Apostle John saw a new Jerusalem and new earth and hear the voice hear a loud voice from the throne saying now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God he will wipe every tear 